today on Be Something Wonderful. Affirm your new identity in reality like this. Astonishingly powerful. I am your host, Tom Kieran, and this is the Be Something Wonderful studio of higher consciousness, where we help you level up and become the best version of yourself. Creators, welcome back. Big video this morning. I want to talk about this client that I talked about in a video a few months ago where he wanted to start a business. And he said, you know, Tom, when I have $50,000, when I save that up, I will start it. He goes, then things will fall in place. I'll feel more stable and secure. Then I'll meet the right girl. I'll have more freedom to travel and all of that, right? And he also mentioned at the time he was a tennis player and he didn't really have time or didn't have anyone to play tennis with. All this was on his mind. Then he got back to me that, that our conversation was started contemplate it, assume it now, don't put any conditions on I am. Imagine it now, imagine, remember I am, this is the stuff that we had talked about and we talked about in our most recent se session. I am is the one emotion and feeling of complete freedom, unlimitedness and creativity. It's not about necessarily temporary translations of source energy, temporary feeling, thoughts and feelings. It's about that I am is really that one emotion, that it's a feeling of complete freedom, of conviction, of unlimitedness, of creativity, of love, all the things that he wants, right? This is what we talked about. Feelings of, and then feeling, where temporary feelings of stability, confidence, and security are real relevant. This was the discussion. He goes, Tom, I really did it. He goes, I made that, that all those other things irrelevant. And he said, what he, what he says now, what he said, and as these things come up, I'll talk about the girl that he met and that he's playing tennis now and traveling. But he goes, I made fear, I made doubt, I made unworthiness, non-fulfillment, all of that is, a, is irrelevant. That's the discussion we have. Time becomes irrelevant, right? You move to that I am. It's not necessarily about the physical steps or actions that he took in 3D to start the business. He moved there within, like I am starting this business. He took some steps, but it wasn't really about those steps. Those were inspired from his movement to say, I'm starting it now. I'm not waiting for anything. In other words, he felt that one emotion, I am. That one feeling of complete freedom, of unlimitedness, of creativity and love within you. That's what I am brings you. Sure, you're going to have temporary thoughts and feelings that either align with that or don't, but they don't matter because when you align with this, then the idea of stability and confidence and security in 3D reality, those temporary states of stability, those temporary uh, moments of confidence, those temporary periods of time of security are irrelevant. Doubt, fear, unworthiness is irrelevant. Time becomes irrelevant. Non-fulfillment becomes irrelevant. It all becomes irrelevant. And part of, he said part of his affirmations was, of course I am. And whenever he would have any doubt or fear or worry about time or anything, he goes, it's irrelevant. That's what he would say to himself. Irrelevant. I am that. Of course I am. I'm already that. He made it irrelevant. Just affirming that to himself knowing that he is that I am. I want to cover this and more. So it turns out in our conversation yesterday that he did, he did meet uh, a girl. She plays tennis, loves to travel. He met her through this business that he started. It all, he, I'm getting tingles, that's powerful. It all fell in place when he moved. Me, moved within, it doesn't, yes, he's going to take, you're going to take action. You're going to take some 3D action, but that's not where the power comes from. The action was taken within first. He moved to that. Uh, he affirmed it now. He started it within. He contemplated. He assumed it. He didn't put any conditions on it. When I have 50000 when I save $50,000, he removed all conditions, right? He removed all of those temporary states or feelings of stability, confidence, and security that they don't matter, that the doubt doesn't matter anymore, the fear doesn't matter, the unworthiness doesn't matter anymore. Because I, yeah, sure, in a, in, with 3D thoughts, I may have thoughts that I'm not ready, that I'm not secure, that I'm not worthy, but they don't matter when you go to that one emotion, that one state, that wait a minute, despite all that, God doesn't change, that I am this doesn't change, of course I am, I, am. I love that, of course I am. Of course I am. All those other things are irrelevant. This is powerful. So 
I want to I put a lesson around this just from his, just from that exciting session with him. And I told him, I, I, we spent some time so I could really pull out some of the gold that he was sharing. Remember, God creates by contemplating his own I amness. This is from Ernest Holmes. This is what he has been doing, right? Contemplating, not looking out at any other conditions except contemplating who he is. That's source energy. That's your consciousness. That's awareness. I am is your multidimensional personality. That's your higher self. That's the real you. That's what he was contemplating. You are all potential identities and versions of yourself or source. He became the identity that has that successful business, that's in a relationship, that's traveling and feels the freedom of doing everything he wants. He moved to that identity. He knows that he is all potential identities. And he just has to light that one up. He has to move to it by imagining it, by assuming it now, by making all other conditions irrelevant and say in his, and in his words, of course I am. Of course I'm that person I want to be. That's why so many spiritual teachers, coaches, and channels of non-physical entities or teachers emphasize the importance of emotions and repetition. In other words, it wasn't the 3D emotions. He's talking about the emotion of source, repeating this idea that of course I am. I am that I am. I am, I am in that business. I am, I am in a relationship. I am all that. One emotion is source energy. Feel it real or natural. It became natural to him. He knows that I am is natural. So it was not unnatural to add to that, that I, of course I am, of course I'm that person or identity that, 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 is, that has that money, that has that successful business, that has that relationship that I want, that is, that is playing tennis, that's feeling the freedom, that is traveling. He moved to that. That's why so many say, the keys are emotion and repetition. But what do we really mean by that? It's not time. It's not getting up every morning at the same time and saying, I got to repeat this five times or 10 times. It's the frequency of returning to that notion or that, that thought or that idea or that image that you are source. It's the one state, I am. It's that, it's persisting in that. that Remember, I am is the one emotion. It's source energy. It's, that's what the repetition means, returning to that knowing, returning that you are that. That's why affirmations can be so powerful. But we, when we affirm from, from making it feel like effort or work, and then, then we don't feel like that. We're not, we don't have that feeling or that one emotion as source. He became source. He, it, he affirmed himself as source. It felt natural to me. It felt real to him. So the feeling of wish fulfilled is your own I amness and inner conviction that you are already that which you want to be. It's natural. This is what Neville got it and all the spiritual greats say. But that's what that means. It's not the temporary emotions or moods of feeling good or not feeling good or having a thought of, of, uh, that I'm not and not having a thought of I'm not or having a thought of, I'm not this yet, or things aren't working out yet, or I don't have the money. All those thoughts were there. But he went to, wait a minute, of course I am. Of course I'm the person that has that money. Of course I'm the person I'm in that relationship. He went to the feeling of his own I amness, his own inner conviction, that he's already that person. It's natural. It is self-contemplation of your true nature or the real you. Remember, God, God contemplates itself and becomes it, right? It's the freak, this is what Neville Goddard says, it's the frequency, not the length of time, that makes it natural. Do you see it? Changing thoughts and feelings, changing thoughts and feelings, or what we call emotions, that's not natural. That's not who you really are. It might be normal, but it's not natural. What's natural is your true state of I am, that one emotion of source energy, of fulfillment, of absolute completion, of that feeling, that, that inner conviction that I am that person I want to be. It's natural. The frequency, again, frequency, repetition, and emotion. The repetition means the frequency that you return to the state. Not necessarily repeating affirmations, uh, parroting them, although that could be powerful if you move to that identity that you already are that. 
But again, it's, it's what that repetition represents. It's the frequency of moving to that state, the naturalness. That's why Neville Goddard says, I do not mean emotion, but the acceptance of the fact that it's fulfilled. When he talks about the feeling of wish fulfilled, he makes it clear here, he's not talking about emotion or changing feelings and thoughts, but the acceptance of the fact that it's fulfilled, the conviction that it's fulfilled, that self-contemplation of your true nature. That to which you con constantly return constitutes your truest self. There it is again, the idea of frequency. The I that's the idea of what coaches and all those spiritual teachers mean by repetition, by returning constantly to your truest self, by returning to that knowing, that awareness of who you really are. There's only one emotion, I am this or source. That's the only emotion that matters. And, then, and remember, it, requ it requires no effort to be who you really are, to be who you already are. It's natural. I am is your true nature. It's source energy. It's the emotion of love. It's source energy. I am affirmations are an expression of your true nature. He also mentioned uh, yesterday that he'd been, he's been watching the Muhammad Ali videos on the I am affirmations. I am the greatest videos. And there he goes, he's really inspired by those as well. So, so those are on the channel if you want to check those out. I am affirmations are an expression of your true nature. That's why they're powerful. That's why repetition with emotion works because you feel the emotion of source, the one emotion, the energy in motion, the pure positive energy of source. Affirmations or ideas of who you are that align with the truth of your divine identity or self-concept feel good, right? They feel good. Those that don't, or those that don't feel that, those that don't feel negative, those that don't, comma, feel negative relative to your true self. Or in other words, you become less aware of your true identity as pure awareness or love. So I am affirmations are an expression of your true nature. Affirmations or ideas of who you are that align with the truth of your divine identity, or what we call self-concept, that unlimitedness that you are, feel good. Those that don't feel negative relative to your true self. That's what negativity means. They're just negative relative to your true nature, to that absolute pure awareness that you are. Or in other words, what does really positivity mean? The degree of positivity is the degree that you're aware of your true nature, right? That true emotion that you are, right? And when you're less aware of your true identity or pure awareness, we feel that as negative emotion, but it's only, so, there's only one emotion, it is source. And so, and, and so the, when, we, when we're feeling something that doesn't, a sensation that doesn't feel like our, uh, true to us, it, we, we interpret that as negative feeling or a negative emotion, but there's only one emotion so it's really the degree that you're aware of your true nature, right? Your assumptions, your ideas or affirmations of who you are, who you really are, your self-concept, create your entire life experience in reality. This is a big thing we covered yesterday because this has created his entire life experience, a 180 from someone who was afraid to quit his job and start a business, right? And to, to someone that started it anyway, didn't quit yet, but started it and, and said, and put everything into the quote future, put conditions on relationships and everything. And as he started, he met the girl, a girl that he's really interested in, a girl that lines up with everything that he loves, travel and tennis, right? And so your subject ideas or affirmations of who you are, yourself, create your entire life experience of reality as source energy, as that one emotion. That's why Jesus said, according to your faith, let it be to you. According to your I am awareness, allow it naturally be to you. Allow, your light, allow that reality to unfold from within you right? To, it's, remember, according to your self-concept, according to your assumptions and ideas about yourself, that's what I am awareness is. It's your self-concept. It's your ideas and assumptions about yourself according to that. Because remember, I am awareness is absolute faith and conviction of being, 
right? Allow it naturally to unfold and be it to you. It unfolds from, from within. Reality and wish fulfilled unfolds from within to without, right? The frequency of returning to and identifying with your ideal or idea of who you are. That's what we're talking about. The frequency of moving back to that self-concept, to that assumption, right? According to your faith, according to the frequency that you identify with that self-concept, according to your assumptions about yourself, what you imagine yourself to be, let it be to you, right? That's the meaning of continual forgiveness of sin, right? That's what Jesus means by 70 times 7, right? The whole, remember the number 7 meaning complete knowing, complete divinity, complete completion, or whole, or divine. Moving back to that divine ideal of who you know, know yourself to be. I am who I assume, imagine, affirm I am to be. According to your awareness and recognition and unification with your I am nature. That's what according to your faith means. According to your awareness, your recognition and unification with your I am nature. As one having authority, like in the centurion, and in, in, in scripture where Jesus uh, heals the centurion's servant, right? As one, because your I am is the one having authority, your true I am, that's your inner authority, that's your conviction of being. Very powerful today. That's why the centurion, when Jesus entered his house, right, to heal his servant, he said, Lord, or La, I am not worthy for you to come under my roof. This is what we feel our 3D selves, our linear mind, the lower mind, our 3D experience, the conditions around us. We, we, feel, we don't feel worthy when we don't see conditions conforming to what we believe they should be. Right? Your mind or state of being with ideas and assumptions of I am not who I, who I want to be yet. Right? But remember, you are pure, you, you exist. And if you exist, you'll always exist and you can't get more worthy than that right? You're true I am, right? I am not worthy. Assume, feel, and believe. This is when you assume, feel, and believe you're separate from what you desire. That's what the centurion was really saying. I feel separate from who I am. I, I, I feel my, my, the servant, remember, represents your body or 3D conditions. They're not healed. They're not whole. I'm not seeing reality as I want to see it, right? The sick servant, unwanted conditions make you feel unworthy, That's why the sick servant, but the centurion knew, just like my client knows, that within you are absolutely complete. Your true nature is I am, is the Lord or Jesus. Remember, you're playing all parts. But just say the word and my servant will be healed. Just affirm it. Just declare it from that one emotion, that one state of being, right? With with, affirm it, the whole complete fulfilled you. As you consciously contemplate, imagine, and assume I am that identity or ideal I desire to be, that ideal or image is is received and reflected in the one mind, in the mind of God, in that that one mind that you are one with that divine mind, right? Then it's acted upon according to the law, according to the Lord, right? And reflected in, in 3D reality. That's what it means by according to your faith, let it be on, be it to you. It's reflected according to, according to how you consciously contemplate, imagine, and assume I am that person or identity I desire to be. Then it's added on to you. It, it is to you as you imagine. That's power. Doubt, fear of non-fulfillment, unworthiness, time, they all become irrelevant. This is what I love. He was referring, he said he was referring to a couple videos where we've talked about this, but we've talked about this in many videos. All of that's irrelevant because it's law. To the degree you contemplate your own, your own I amness, you allow the power that creates worlds to work or create through you and as you. To the degree that you affirm it, the words that I speak to you, I do not speak of my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does the works. This is John 14, 10. This really rung his bell, right? The words that I speak to you, I do not speak of my own authority. Your own authority, it feels like I'm unworthy. It feels like the con- I'm not creating the conditions that I, I'm not seeing or creating or imagining or manifesting or perceiving the conditions I desire, so I feel unworthy. But it's not on that authority. It's on an authority that's much greater than you. 
but also you're one with that authority. You're one with the Father. The Father who, who dwells in me does the works. So you just got to be willing to believe that, right? You're only limited by your unwillingness to assume, affirm, and imagine and believe in your own I amness, in your own desired identity and reality. He really got this. He just became willing to believe and say the word. He became willing to move within. That's why Neville Goddard says your refusal to believe it is the only reason you do not see it. Be willing Right? It's your unwillingness, it's your refusal to assume, affirm, and imagine, and believe it. In your own I amness is why you're not seeing it, or living it, or experiencing it. Right? That's powerful. Your I am identity is your conscious, natural, forever unbroken connection to the one divine mind and source of all that is. It, he got this, and, and remember, I, I was trying to, I was asking him about, did he have any, you know, what was his process? But his process, he goes, Tom, I got it. It wasn't, I, it wasn't something he, he scheduled every day. He just, he just declared within him that, of course I am. And when contrary thoughts or feelings or conditions would come up, he says, those are irrelevant. I know who I am, right? This is what he, he just repeated that, reminded himself, free, with frequency, returned to that knowing. You know what already, you know what you know. You can't lose your knowing, right? You are God contemplating yourself as, as contemplating yourself. Who do you say I am? That's why Jesus asked that question. Your answer determines and creates who you are, who you were, and who you will be right now and create your entire life experience. Remember from this present moment, who I am, it's not in the future, it's not when this happens or when that happens or when I feel more secure or when, or when conditions are just right. It's right now and when you do that, you change all conditions. You change all realities. You change all versions of you in this current moment by determining who you are now. Who you were and who you will be change accordingly. Do you say, if you create everything from this now moment, I am the door, I am the way to what? What, did, what was Jesus saying that I am this, that I am awareness? What is it the door to? It's the door to everything you want, to the Father, to the source, to the inexhaustible supply of everything you want to have, experience, and be. Affirm your new identity and reality like this. Astonishingly, astonishing, astonishing results. I am your host, Tom Karen, and this is the Be Something Wonderful studio of higher consciousness, where we help you level up and become the best version of yourself. Creators, thank you. Don't forget, end of this month, December 30th, um, so, I think it's Saturday this time because we have the new year coming up. We have the holiday. I'm going to do the live stream on the 30th. It's a Saturday morning at 9 a.m. Pacific Coast Standard Time. I've already announced it. It's already been sent out. I will announce it again and send out a, a reminder. That's going to be exclusively on the membership channel. If you're a member, great. Tune in. If you're not, you can check it out. There's a link below. Send your questions to info at besomethingwonderful.com ahead of time. Creators, thank you. Thank you for being part of our Facebook group, the Be Something Wonderful Ambassadors at facebook.com slash groups slash Be Something Wonderful. We now have a team that, that is looking at... Uh, uh, the social media and, and answering uh, questions and, and also uh, may, may even start interacting on Facebook. They're not there yet, but, they're, but we're starting to get that stuff in place. Thank you for being part of our Instagram and Twitter at Tom Karen and being part of our TikTok at Be Something Wonderful. Creators, thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for commenting. Thank you for just tuning in every day. More to come. Creators with great love, with great light and infinite gratitude. This is Tom in the studios of Be Something Wonderful in Las Vegas. Until next time, we'll see you soon.